Mmm, is there anything better than a bouquet of fresh flowers? Well, it turns out these pretty daisies don't smell sweet just for you. Just like you might dab on Chanel No. 5 on date night, some flowers use their aroma as a tactic of attraction. Stick around to find out what they're after and how they get it. Hey everyone, I'm Judy, and these are Gerbera daisies. Their pretty scent just happened to draw me in at the flower shop, but in nature, flowers have evolved to produce scents that appeal to pollinators. Floral scents are made up of complex combinations of chemicals, many of which are volatile organic compounds that can readily evaporate. Flowers typically produce volatiles in their petals, where the compounds can vaporize and waft to any pollinators that might be buzzing by. Here are three plants that send out this come-hither signal in three different ways. First, petunias. These common garden flowers don't waste their precious resources smelling nice all day. Pollinators are most likely to be around in the evening, so that's when petunias produce lots of fragrant compounds called benzenoids and phenylpropanoids. Petunias are genetically programmed to stifle these scent molecules in the morning. Although petunias create scents we can appreciate, other flowers take smells to a whole new level. Flower number two, Sumatra's Titan Arum. This giant bloom is known by locals as Bunga Bangkai, a corpse flower. The plant's rotting animal smell comes from an organic compound called dimethyl trisulfide, the same stuff you sniff in skunked beer and Limburger cheese. By smelling like rotten flesh, the corpse flower tricks bees and beetles into thinking it's a carcass, prime real estate for laying insect eggs. A sticky plant can thus become its own pollinator incubator. Finally, a staple of any flower shop, the rose. Florists have long recognized that roses cultivated for their visual beauty can have a lackluster fragrance. But researchers have recently pinned down the rose enzyme that produces geraniol, the molecule most responsible for the rose's signature scent. Rose breeders can try and use that information to create more fragrant flowers that are still visually stunning. Now that's what I call flower power. Special thanks to the experts that explain the smelly science behind this speaking of chemistry. You can learn more about their work in the description below where we've also included some of CNEN's floral-scented stories that inspired this episode. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and stop and smell the roses.